talking about Parade, the ballet by Cocteau, Picasso, Satie and Massine, this video is a gamble. Having stories from different music genres on this channel is already a big hazard, but this is taking the bet to the next level. Is my audience judging music only by its label, or will you be open-minded enough to get interested in a good story? The Ballet Parade was a big gamble in itself, too. It was a daring work put together by four giants of 20th century arts, their first and last work together. They gambled their credibility on a satirical ballet in a nation four years into the worst war the world had known since people could remember. So, let's start. Will I manage to keep my cool and win this bet? And this game of cards? It all began on the evening of the 29th of March 1913. The protagonist of the story, Jean Cocteau, problem child from a well-to-do Parisian family, 24, homosexual Jean, was already quite a sensation in the Ville Lumière thanks to his poems. Cocteau is close to avant-garde circles in town, cubists, fauvists and futurists. He had contacts with them all. Anyhow, on that 29th of March evening, Jean Cocteau had been at the premiere of Le Sacre du Printemps, another history-making ballet in its own right, another success of the Ballet Russe and their legendary impresario Sergei Diaghilev. In the chaos of the premiere, Cocteau had a realization. He looked around him. The discussions on the music of the ballet were literally turning into fist fights. People were upset, screaming. The soiree offered all the ingredients for a scandal ready to burst. Respectable, classy people with their best clothes on, with their purse, jewels and ostrich feathers, with their hats, gloves and golden cufflinks. The snobbish aestheticism of the critics. The contrast between the primitivism on the scene and the rich, decadent demimonde of the stalls. Cocteau thought he wanted to create something like that, something that would make people upset, a big scandal that could turn into a spectacle within the spectacle. Cocteau came up with a vague idea about a ballet that showcased street artists, the kind of stuff one could see in the real streets of Paris, in the poorest arrondissements, making the bourgeois pay to watch something the poor could watch for free. <laughs> what a laugh! Cocteau proposed the idea to Diaghilev and composer Igor Stravinsky. Stravinsky, fresh from the success of his sacre, wasn't interested. Diaghilev wasn't responsive either. Allegedly, he only remarked to Jean, surprise me. Not quite what Cocteau had expected, but a gamble is never plain sailing. When you start losing, you got to edge your bets and keep going, or walk back home licked and penniless. Cocteau didn't give up. If Stravinsky wasn't interested in his idea, no problem. It was Paris, after all, and Jean was well connected. He would find another composer, Pronto, but it wasn't so simple. It took Cocteau three years to find someone who could be interesting enough. By then, it was 1916. World War I had restricted the opportunities for concerts. These were not happy times. And yet, during a soiree, Cocteau heard the performance of Eric Satie's Trois Morceaux and Form de Poire. Yes, that's three pear-shaped pieces in English. Satie was 50, 23 years older than Cocteau. He was only relatively known to the French public, but he was an institution in music circles. His gymnopedies are widely known even today. 
Дам, 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 дам. But Satie wasn't a stereotypical avant-garde composer. After being kicked out of a conservatoire twice, he decided to complete his studies at a mature age. His enrollment at the Scola Cantorum in 1905 robbed his friends the wrong way. A private and conservative school of music in Paris, Scola Cantorum was as far removed from the avant-garde as one could imagine. Cocteau loved what he heard in Satie's music. It was the opposite of what had become expected of the Impressionist avant-garde. It was not mysterious and rich, vague and shimmering. It was lean, linear, simple, the ideal match for his street ballet idea. Cocteau spoke with Satie about the project and the two decided to work on it together. The game was on. Now that someone was on board for the music, Cocteau needed someone for the stage production and the costumes. The problem was solved with a chance meeting. One day, Jean met his friend Pablo Picasso in the street. Right then and there, he talked Pablo into taking part in the ballet project. Pablo Picasso was 36 and already a giant in the art world. By the time he accepted to work with Cocteau and Satie in early 1917, he had already outgrown his initial style, creating the Cubist movement with Georges Braque, and then innovating it with the use of collage. Cocteau knew of Picasso's rose period with its clowns and circus subjects, and of his liking for African art and privativism. If there was one man who could turn Cocteau's vision into a great visual spectacle, that man was Picasso. And Picasso agreed. I don't know what convinced Pablo. He knew Cocteau, of course, but the two weren't close friends. Perhaps it was the significance of ballet in the early 20th century. Back then, Ballet was the crossroad of different art forms. Visual arts, dance, music, all mixed together to create new emotions for the viewers. This was where new grounds were being broken. It was the perfect medium to experiment and cause a sensation. And it helped that the dancers were pretty too, I guess. Anyhow, with Satie and Picasso working on his idea, Cocteau pitched the ballet to Diaghilev once again. This time, the impresario gave him the green light. This was to be a Ballet Russe production. Now, there was just one problem. How could Cocteau top all the successes of the company? The first step was putting a lot of thought into what the ballet could be. After a good round of brainstorming, the initial concept evolved. Cocteau's idea of a parade of street artists remained. In fact, it gave the name to the ballet. But now the cultural references had grown much wider than initially imagined. Parade was to be a crossroad of cultural references. Cocteau wanted Satie and Picasso to come down from the ivory towers of the avant-garde. He wanted them to create a mix of the very old and the very new. Satie wrote music that winged to the 17th century dance music, to more up-to-date waltzes, to the latest rage in jazz dancing, ragtime and cakewalk. Picasso, too, started working on the visuals of the ballet, mixing several references. Diaghilev requested Pablo used figures similar to those in his earlier paintings for the curtains. But Picasso went way beyond that. He drew inspirations from paintings like Seurat, Parade de Cirque, from descriptions of street parades held at the annual fairs of Saint Germain, Eclos Saint Laurent, and Saint Ovid. These events dated back to the 12th century and had stopped for good with the French Revolution in 1789. In addition, there's an Italian connection. Cocteau and Picasso followed the tour of the Ballet Russe in Italy. 
they stayed in Rome and visited Naples and Pompeii. It was a good chance for Picasso to let more influences soak in. On one hand, there were the frescoes of Pompeii. On the other, there was futurism. Futurist Giacomo Balla aided Picasso with the design of the curtains and that of the costumes. Parade started getting its own identity. The ballet was a weird dream sequence set in a Paris suburb. The music had a loose structure, even compared to the already loose standard of ballets. It sounded like a stream of consciousness. It used alternating themes to reflect the sequential idea of a street parade. Leonid Massine was called upon to create the choreography. Massine usually worked using a trial and error procedure. This time, this approach paid huge dividends. Picasso's costumes for the horse and the two managers weren't conductive to flowing movements. Massine solved the problem by limiting the dancers. It might be me, but those sections strike a happy balance between parody and innovation. At times, it almost seems Massine anticipated break dancing by a good 60 years. The company started rehearsing the material with the premiere night in sight. Cocteau had wanted a scandal, a show that would make people upset. We soon learned they were on the right track. The dancers had to learn moving with their stiff costumes on, but their moaning was nothing compared to the orchestra's. Satie's music was so linear that the maestros initially refused to play through the score. This, surely, was vulgar ballroom music, unsuitable for their expertise. Cocteau smelled victory. But he decided to force his hand and have noises added to the score. A gun shooting to recall the war fought on French soil right at that very moment. A typewriter to recall the bad news reported by the press. A police siren to remind the viewers of the crimes haunting the poorest industrial suburbs of Paris. Satie wasn't exactly thrilled, but he ended up agreeing to these inclusions. Now, Cocteau was sure, the scandal was assured. <laughs> but was he actually so? <laughs> After all, you can judge your hand only when the cards are on the table and the game unfolds. 18th of May, 1917. Parade opened at the Théâtre du Châtelet in Paris. It was a triumph or a disaster, depending on whose side you're on. On the surface, Parade was to be a fantastic production. The synthesis of the most advanced tendencies in French art. But as the show went on, the paying public became more and more uneasy. Years later, Cocteau recalled the agitation of the crowd. At the end of the performance, there was an uproar. Diaghilev thought there had been an accident. Has the big chandelier over the stalls crashed down or something? The impresario asked. According to Cocteau, he heard women swearing that they would have gouged his eyes out. Allegedly, only the sight of Apollinaire standing close to Cocteau managed to stop them. The writer was still wearing bandages for a war wound to the head. The caliber of the scandal was exaggerated by Cocteau, but Parade was offensive. It was a work that derided the industrial society and its contradictions. The merits of La Belle Epoque, the beautiful age, which had led the world straight into a world war. The worst offense was it all seemed so sedated and dreamlike. Parade never showed the brutality and the bestiality of the current society. It only hinted at them. It suggested that apathy and nonchalance were the only possible response to a dehumanized world as if nothing else mattered at all in the inner life of the soul. The war, the poverty, the violence, the future. Nothing could shake the artist. Critic Jean Pueg 
wrote of Parade as an outrage against the French taste. Satie sent to Puig several scatting postcards offending him. The matter led to a spectacular trial. Satie was sentenced to eight days of prison and to pay a fine. Okay. And game! Let's face it, if you are still listening, I think I deserve a comment on this video. What did you like the most? What could use more work? Drop me a line and let me know. As for Parade, I'm happy to say that its artistic merits go beyond the scandal it created on that first performance. It does more than simply commenting on the 1910s bourgeois society. It offers the view of four great artists on avant-garde itself. Cocteau evidently thought that art could be a sanctuary where the artist could find a refuge. Satie instead seemed to think that art should serve a higher purpose than a simple shelter. That's why I didn't see eye to eye with Cocteau during the creative process. Picasso was happy to show that his art was not all seriousness and abstractism, that he could have a laugh at himself too. A scene proved the inventiveness could win even over physical difficulties. There would be a lot more to say, but a long theoretical discussion goes beyond the scope of this video and of your patience. In the description I'm leaving you some of the sources I have used for this content if you want to learn more. You will also find the link to a video of the ballet. I doubt the source is legal, so hurry up before it gets taken down. Having said that, I'll see you soon for another music-related story on this very channel. This was Simon Mas. Stay cool and keep your top hat on. Bye bye. Simon Mas, music you love.